Come, come, come out tonight. Come, come, come out to play. Come, come, come out tonight. Alice, go out and play. This was it. And Buckley felt just like turning around and going home without playing the song he wanted her to hear. The one he'd written for her on the subject of a potential them. His mouth couldn't have got any drier than if it was stuffed full of super absorbent, super jumbo, Berkeley Jensen organic cotton balls. Right now, he felt like an out of place idiot, standing in the middle of a busy bar restaurant with his guitar strapped uncomfortably to his right shoulder. Instead, he decided to stay and just give it his best shot. An entertainer the Mad Hatter bar and restaurant had hired to perform for the night just announced he'd be taking a short break. So the house DJ filled the momentary silence with songs that only a younger crowd probably knew a line or two of the lyrics well enough to sing along with here and there. Halfway between the makeshift stage and the men's restroom, Buckley was able to intercept the exiting performer and offer his deal. Hey. Hey. First off, solid set, man, well played. Now, second, let's make a deal. What kind of fucking deal are we fucking talking about here? You clear it with the manager here, and if you guys let me play just one song, I'll give you $100 in cash. Buckley knew talk was cheap, so he held out the C-note as a testimonial to his sincerity and integrity. This offering, an act accepted without delay by the other party in the transaction, was a small price to pay if he could only get her to hear what he poured his heart into and composed. He'd come prepared, so if the performer had wanted more than the original offer tendered, Buckley had some wiggle room stashed in the wallet nestled in the back pocket of his blue jeans. But now the deal was done, and at a bargain basement price to boot. Remember, you have to clear it with the manager here. I don't want to get shut down less than a minute into it after giving you a hundred dollars. Deal? Deal. But I don't need to clear it with no fucking manager. That's my fucking equipment. This is my fucking show. If the fucking manager here has any fucking problem with it, he can fucking take it out with fucking me. I'll punch his fucking likes out like I fucking did last week. Now I've got to drop a few kids off for a fucking swimming lesson, so you just go and play for as fucking long as you fucking like. Catching the house DJ's eye, then making a slashing motion at his throat to give him the fucking cut it sign, the bowel movement challenged performer, then disappeared into the men's room to keep the aforementioned swim class appointment. Following the orders of the only one who appeared to be in fucking charge here, the house music abruptly cut out and a terrifying shock of silence fell upon the establishment. Buckley marched with resolution in the direction of the makeshift stage. Upon it were two microphones on stands, a speaker case with an amp head resting on top where the mic cables were attached, and a single solitary bar stool. Buckley froze. Did he really want to do this? take the risk of looking like a fool in front of not only strangers but the one for whom he'd written the song and at the restaurant where she worked waiting tables partially by the forfeiting of a Benjamin but mainly by how much he needed her to hear his song he mustered the courage to set foot upon the small stage while he hadn't spotted Alice on his way into the Mad Hatter bar and restaurant or even en route to the stage he knew she must be around somewhere. Not only could Buckley sense her presence somewhere within the restaurant, but he'd also stopped by the place last night before a shift had ended and they'd spoken briefly. In all honesty, he hadn't innocently just dropped in for a drink last night. Neither, not only another Mad Hatter server, but Alice's friend, had tipped him off during a prior visit that the object of his affection would be celebrating her 26th birthday yesterday, so Buckley had come bearing a gift. A while ago, Alice, who was born in Croatia, had shared with him who her favourite recording artists were. One was a female rapper from Slovenia called Sanida, aka the Balkan Trap Diva. The other, a Bosnian singer-writer, was Dino Merlin, 
aka the wizard. So, doing his due diligence, Buckley logged into his Amazon Prime account to find and purchase a CD by each of them. From a bit of research on Wikipedia, he discovered that the Slovenian's most notable hit record was Slajana and that Merlin's was Ruja. Buckley made sure he'd bought an album from each on which they were included. In addition, he'd also picked up a simple birthday card for her and written a message that said, Alice, happy B-Day. Hope you still have a CD player at your place, and if not, I'll be happy to rip the tracks and send them to you. Best B-Day wishes, Buckley. He'd toyed with the thought of signing it Love Buckley, but was worried it might be slightly overplaying his hand. After all, the lovelorn lad was still not quite sure where he stood with the desired red-haired woman in his dreams. When he'd been there last night to drop off his gift, he stayed long enough for a beer before giving her the CDs and card. When paying for the drink, Buckley casually asked, You working here tomorrow? Yeah, gotta pay the rent, right? Right. Buckley, I'm pregnant. To say this took him by surprise was an understatement. Regaining composure, he replied, then we should talk. Not now, it's my birthday, and I just found out the staff is throwing a little party to celebrate after we close. Besides, I'm slammed with tables tonight. And yes, we should talk. Can you come by tomorrow, Buckley? Okay. Standing to leave, and while fishing the gift from his shoulder bag, the bashful boy hurriedly told her, Happy birthday, I gotta go, but I promise I'll be back tomorrow, before rushing out of the hatter. Feeling like he'd made a fool of himself again, Buckley went home, having not spoken the words he wished he'd had the courage to share with her. Once inside the tiny hobohemian one-bedroom apartment, he picked up his steel string guitar to write her a song. The words that poured from his heart as he sang were the exact words he'd wanted to tell her from almost the first day they'd met. In about an hour, the song was written. After composing it, he knew what his next steps had to be. Return to the Mad Hatter Bar and Restaurant tomorrow night, let Alice hear his song, discuss what they needed to talk about. Buckley set about unpacking and tuning his guitar, and then checking to be sure that both microphones were live. He climbed atop the bar stool on stage and launched into the tune aptly titled Alice. Wherever she was tonight, he was sure, after hearing her own name repeated while he performed, she would emerge to listen more closely. In the negative charge, meet the positive charge. When they come together, Come on now, tonight. Oh, 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 Alice. Come out to play. Let down your long red hair. Someday, somewhere, somebody will care. Love your beauty and all love your flaws. To pick you up every time you fall. Thank you. 
But the woman never appeared. Instead, and in the middle of repeating the ending chorus, he was cut off by a woman's scream. Stopping the performance and turning around, he discovered it was Nida. With a cell phone still held to the side of her face, she began crying as she repeated a single word over and over and over again. No, 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 no. The other waitresses from the MHBNR, all except Alice that is, rushed to her side. Seeing that Nida had begun to swoon, one of the girls grabbed the phone, while another two helped to gently ease her in a prone position on the barroom floor, where she was now sobbing uncontrollably. The one with Nida's phone spoke into it, listened, and then she too began to cry. The waitress with the phone said something to the others that Buckley could not hear. Like chain lightning and in rapid succession, each turned on the waterworks. I can't believe it. She's one wailed. Another one. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my. In confusion, along with an unexplainable sense of dread, Buckley hopped off the bar stool with the guitar still in hand and move toward them to investigate. Come, come, come out tonight. Come, come, come out to play. Come, come, come out tonight. Alice, come out and play. <laughs> 